right off, I'd like to tell suggest in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to overclock your CPU on the Gigabyte B450i Oris Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. Just like the rest of my overclocking videos, i got to throw the disclaimer out there that this is a how-to or tutorial on showing you how to do this. If you decide to overclock your CPU using this method I'm showing you, you hold full responsibility if anything happens to your computer components. I am not responsible for any damages done to your components if you do this. So let me flip you over here. We're running down through the components that I used in this setup. And then I'll show you how to get it done. And I'll show you what I was able to get my processor up to by using this motherboard. For the processor, we are using the Ryzen 7 2700, which is 8 core 16 thread processor, boosted up to 4.1 gigahertz. Of course, the motherboard is the Gigabyte B450 or Pro Wi Fi motherboard. For the RAM, we have G Skills Rip Draws 5 series 16 gigs. It's running at 3600 megahertz speed. For the storage is a silicon power 512 gigabyte NVMe M.2 PCI Gen 3 times 4 SSD. CPU cool, we are running the Be Quiet BW006 Purely 240 all in one water liquid cooling system. For the graphics short in the system, we have the Gigabyte Radio and RX 5600 XT Win Force OC 6 gig graphics short. For the case, this is a Cooler Master Half XB Evo High Air Test Flow Test Bench and Land Box. When I was doing my testing today, all the side panels was on just like it would be in a regular case. And to power everything, we have the EVGA GQ 210 GQ 650 80 plus gold 650 watt modular power supply. That supports to make up the system. Now I'm going to show you how to get this overclocking done on this motherboard and what I was able to push my Ryzen 7 2700 to. And then I'll be back with my conclusion to the video. Alright all, here we are on the desktop. First thing to get this CPU overclocked is we're going to have to go into the BIOS. You go down here to your Windows. Left click, go up to Power. Left click, go to Restart. And when you start restarting, it just start tapping the delete key on your keyboard. All right, here you go. We're into the BIOS. We are into the into the MIT. All right, guys, we're here. We go. We're into the BIOS now. Come over here and you uh, hover over top of this, and this here will tell you about your CPU frequency, which is at 3215.10. Temperature is at 30 degrees Celsius. Voltage is 1.04. Here's your memory speeds, which mine, my memory is already overclocked. The frequency is at 3215.10. There's 16 gigs, or 16, 16,384 megabits. And it is pushing 1.368 volts. Okay, now to get the CPU overclocked, you go up here to your advanced frequency settings right here. Your CPU clock control right here set on auto. CPU clock ratio is on auto, which is 3200. CPU frequency, which is 3.21. And like I said earlier, you know, this one's supposed to be able to, the 2700, should be able to go up to 4.1 gigahertz. Let's change that to 37. It'll be 3.7 gigahertz. But now we can't do that with the frequency the way that it is. There ain't, ain't quite enough voltage, so under 3.7. So we're gonna go back and go into advanced voltage setting. And it's on auto. So the CPU V core, instead of auto, we're gonna go with 1.35. And yes, AMD, they say you can go up to even higher than that. They say you can do up to 1.45. If you watched any of my other ones, I don't like run them to the very max to what they say you can do. I like to keep them a little bit below that. So that's what we're going to do. And on the V Core SOC, we're going to also change that to 1.35 as well. And hit enter. And we forgot to hit enter on this one. 1.35, hit enter. So it changes to 1.35 volts. And we're gonna go over here and hit save and exit. And we're gonna see what this does for us. Save configuration and restore it, yes. All right, guys, there's 3.7 gigahertz. Uh, by looking at the score, 
you have the 2700, 3.7, got 8,709 score. We do have a 3.2, it got a 9.03 score. 3.6 is the best so far, it got a 93.04 score. Now there's a 30 minute savability test on Senate Bench Order 23. So let's go ahead and see, uh, since we up to have voltage, we'll see if we can get to run to 3.8 and see how that works out for us. We're going to try the 4.10. <clears throat> see what that happens. I know what happened last time, but since we up to have voltage, maybe it'll, it'll actually boot into Windows here. Let's see what happens at 4.1 gigahertz. Hey, looky there. At 1.35 volts, we was able to boot it up into Windows. At 4.09 or 4.1 gigahertz. I wonder if I'll actually be able to run uh, Senate Bench R23 now. Let's see if we can get to run the test for a half hour. Duration, half hour for the stability of it. And hit the go button. There it goes. And it looks like it's boosting all the way up to 4.06, 4.07. I should do quite a bit for that score. Let's see what happens. See if it makes it through the half hour test or not. See if it's stable at 4.1 gigahertz. All right, guys, by looking at that, it looks like that uh, the 4.1 is not stable. So let me reset the BIOS and uh, we'll drop it down a little bit, see if we can get 4.0 to run. All right, so the 4.1, even at 1.35 volts, wasn't stable. Um, we'll go in and see if we can do like a 4.0. But they have to reset the BIOS, so we will have to set up the XMP again. And we will have to turn the voltage back up. All right, let's get into the BIOS here. Hit the restart button. I right, guess here, here we are inside of the BIOS. You go up here to advanced frequency setting. The CPU, we're gonna leave that at auto, which is 100 times whatever the clock ratio is. But we are gonna change the clock ratio and we will be changing the voltage. All right now it's on 32 or 3.2 gigahertz. Let's try four. Let's try 40 which will give us the 4.0 gigahertz. Okay, hit enter, and it gives you your 4.00. Okay, as you can tell down here on the XMP or the memory profile, I did overclock my memory to 3200 megahertz, which is what the kit is rated for. Okay, we're gonna go back here, go back up here to voltage, advanced voltage control. The CPU B core, it says auto. We're gonna change that to 1.35. AMD says you can do 1.45. I don't like running to the max of what they say you can do. I'd rather keep it down some. So I always go with 1.35. Hit enter and it changes that to 000B. We're gonna come down here to the V core SOC and we're gonna put in the same there, 1.35 and hit enter. And there's this down here is for your uh, VRAM. So we ain't gonna mess with that too much. I'm gonna go up here and hit save and exit. Save and exit. Save and exit. And we'll see if it boots back into Windows or not. All right, looks like we're back into Windows. Let's open up Task Manager, see what it says it's running at. Performance, let's see our memory's running at 3200 megahertz, which is nice. Our CPU is running at 3.99 gigahertz or 4.0 gigahertz, pretty much. Uh, we'll boot up Cinebench R23 here. And see if it's gonna be stable with 4.0. Turn on the minimum uh, test duration. Turn it on 30 minutes, that way it's a stability test and hit start. And of course we want to do multi-core, we want to make sure all the cores are uh, stable. 
And we'll be back in about a half hour or so if it don't crash and uh, see what the kind of scores that gets us. And all right, guys, there we go. Test is finally finished. And it is half hour at the 3.99 gigahertz or the 4.0 gigahertz, you might as well say. That's what it said at in the BIOS. Come over here and look. You got, the, you got it over here in the orange, but it did finish the test. 4 gigahertz on the Ryzen 7 2700 8 core processor of 8435. We ran it also at 3.7. It also ended up in a score of 8709. We also have one at 3.2, which is the base clock setting for it, the way it comes out of the box. I did have the RAM overclock, that was the only thing that was happening with it. And we got a 9030 score. And we also had it run at 3.6 gigahertz. For a score of 9304. So it actually looks like by these scores, it looks like overclocking it to 3.6. is about the best, because it did better than the 4.0 score did. It did better than the 3.7 score did. And of course it would have done better than the 3.4 or the 3.2 score. Of course it would have done better than that because it is a higher speed. So I'm not too sure on why the 3.6 did the best or got the best score out of that. But anyways, it looks like the best that I could get out of my Ryzen 7 2700 on, the, on this motherboard was 4.0 and that was at 1.35 volts. Um, anything less than the 1.35 volts, it wouldn't even uh, start to run the test. So I had to bump up the voltage, which I showed you earlier. I showed you how to up that, up that voltage. And yes, AMD says you can go up to 1.45. But if you've seen any of my other overclocking guides, I've explained why I don't like doing that. Because that's the max, or that's what they recommend the max to be. But anyways, that's about what I got. There's how you overclock on this motherboard. And also, that's about the max that I can get on my 2700. Let me get reset up here, and I'll come up with a conclusion to the video. All right, all went down through, showed you the push and made up my kind of test bed. I went through, and I showed you how to overclock your CPU on this particular motherboard. And I also showed you how to turn up your voltage. If I didn't turn up that voltage that's going into the CPU, I was only able to get up to 3.6. But, but by giving a little bit more extra voltage, which I put up to 1.35 volts, I was able to get my overclock up to 4.0 gigahertz, which I think is pretty good. And that was on an all quarter ratio, so every quarter is hitting 4 gigahertz, which I think is pretty good. And if you looked at the numbers there at the end, you know, even the higher overclock CPU wasn't reading as quite as good a score as some of the lower clock speeds, and I can't figure out why that was. But that's the score that I ended up with after a half hour run on Cinebench R23. I chose a half hour because that makes sure that the CPU overclock was nice and stable. If you like this kind of content, go down and give me a like. If not, there's that dislike button. There's that comment section below. I go through them every weekend here on Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. If you really like this kind of content, maybe hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell where you're notified next time I upload a video or I go live here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter where I don't care your inbox. I do put up photos of new stuff I have coming in, give you an idea of what's coming up on the channel. But that i got to change the time, we'll cancel the live stream. That's where you also get that information. With all that being said, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.